decided to do part two of this Nightmall motor version 1.0 because of all the negative comments I received from part one and to explain why there was so much confusion over the concepts and design I presented. So this is the completed working version functioning exactly the way it was designed to. Later I'll show you the original version and point out the design flaw that caused all of the confusion. I'll also share some of the native comments that were posted and give you my response in video form. After seeing my video response, hopefully you'll find the negative comments as entertaining as I did. I enjoy reading people's responses, negative or positive. It's always good to hear what people think. If you don't wish to grow and you aren't thick-skinned enough to handle a few negative comments, you really don't want to have the type of channel I do. I would like to personally thank all the people who commented on part one, regardless of whether their comments were negative or positive, because it gave me a reason to make a far better video than the original, and to explain things better, and to grow. So let me switch back to the original design, and start out by explaining the reason for some of the confusion. Quite a few people were posting that this was some sort of a water wheel. So, I just thought I would demonstrate this without the heat differential in the water so that it's easy to see that this is not a water wheel. You can pour this as hard as you want and the thing will not consistently turn. And there's a very good reason for that. Okay, let's try that same thing again, this time with a temperature differential. Warm water, not quite boiling. And then we'll pour a little room temperature water on here. And you see it takes off in whatever direction I pour it. When it hits the night and all springs. Now I must also admit that the real reason for the confusion is a design flaw here. This should be approximately 10 inches in diameter. So my mistake in part one of this video was assuming the people would understand that the reason I was pouring the cold water over the wheel was because of the smaller diameter of the wheel in order to make it work. But we all know the old adage of what happens when we assume. We make an ass out of you and me. So my apologies, my mistake. Moving on. Let's take a look at the very first night all motor ever built. This was built by Ridgeway Banks back in the early 1970s. And this is from a documentary that was done by a news agency in the early 80s. I'll provide a link so you can watch it in its entirety at the end of this video. These are two of Bridgeway Bank's earliest designs. This is a more simplified motor that Ridgeway Banks put together just to demonstrate the principles of Nightnall motors. The simple device runs at 17 cycles a minute and has been running for over 10 years. At the time the Individualist documentary was released, it was approaching the 81 million cycles mark. 
according to Ridgeway Banks, if you don't shock the night and all into use, if you let it do what it wants to do, it'll work indefinitely. Obviously you don't have to just use warm water, you can use any source of heat. You could even use a hair dryer to rotate a night and all wheel. I learned something from Ridgeway Banks, who invented the first night and all heat engine. If you don't try to force it, shock it, or push it in the directions that it doesn't want to go, if you let the night and all do what it wants to, it'll eventually work out its direction and rhythm of motion on its own, and it'll continue in it for as long as there is a system of heating and cooling active. According to Ridgeway Banks, if you do this, the night and all motor will run for an indefinite period of time, meaning it doesn't wear out like it does in stress tests where it's shocked and stretched beyond its limits and pushed in directions it doesn't want to go. Night and all almost has a natural order to it, like the wind. The wind doesn't want to be forced where it doesn't want to go, but it can be used to power a sailboat or a wind generator by simply riding its ebb and flow. I'm going to leave you with some of the comments that were posted from part one. This should be entertaining after seeing my earlier demonstrations that clarify the confusion viewers were having. However, if you get bored, feel free to drag your cursor across the timeline to the last 20 seconds of this video and you can access the links I promised. Thanks for watching. Do great things.